Coming up on News About Asa, a father kills his child and injures another. And a teacher offering money for sex is being charged this morning. Fallon Samaj will give us a look at the weather, and Shelby Mitchell has our local sports. News About Asa starts right now. Welcome to this Thursday edition of News Valdosta. I'm Courtney Chickas. And I'm Monique Alexander. A man who fled from law officers say is under investigation following a car crash that killed two people yesterday. A Nashville suspect is in custody after a high-speed chase that ended with three people injured and two dead. Tim Rutland was taken to an area hospital and is being treated for injuries following the accident. Officers say Rutland was on the run from law enforcement when he crashed into a vehicle that contained three people. That collision with the black SUV killed two people and injured another. No charges have been filed, but an investigation into the deaths is continuing. Three Douglas County residents have been arrested in the connection with an armed robbery and home invasion that occurred on Baker Farm Road. Christopher Channing Coleman, Zachary Drew, and Zora Leanne McGlashan were taken into custody by officials from Coffee County and Tiff County, where the suspects were staying. Coleman and Watson were charged with burglary, kidnapping, and armed robbery, and both were denied bond. Anyone with information about the robbery is asked to call the Coffee County tips line. The little town of Willacoochee continues to mourn the loss of two Nashville residents that were killed in a Tuesday car crash near Highway 82. Matt Horn and his sister Kelly Prescott were killed in the accident. Funeral arrangements are still pending. Testimony has started for former Westover High School teacher Restago Holmes, accused of offering money for sex with teenage girls. He has been charged with three counts of pandering for persons under the age of 18 and one count of enticing a child for indecent purposes. The jury was selected last night and the testimony will begin next Wednesday. If Holmes is convicted, he could face 10 years in prison for each account. A Cairo man allegedly responsible for the death of a three-month-old child has been arrested and charged with murder. The GBI, Cairo Police, and Grady Sheriff's Office arrested Marcus Smiley on Wednesday. Smiley was charged with malice murder, aggravated battery, and cruelty to children to his three-month-old daughter, Mia Williams, and seven-year-old. The trial will begin next week. Students are honoring a South Georgia firefighter killed in a motorcycle crash two months ago. The Lee County Beta Club is raising money for Dan Hardin's favorite charity. Students from Lee County West Middle School are selling wristbands to remember Dan Hardin. Printed on the bands are the words, in memory of Dan Hardin, give Burns the boot. You can learn more about the Georgia Firefighters Burn Foundation by visiting their website. Coming up, one Ombudsman College is trying to implement new ways of retaining students. And one high school might be the reason why some homeless people are staying warm this winter. Stay with us. Yes, I am. Give it to him hard. No, no, no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Albany Technical College is trying to find new ways to increase graduations at the school. Experts from California who work with Community College are helping the staff make potential improvements at the college. Reports say students sometimes graduate with more credits than needed because they don't have a clear path laid out from the start. And that means it's hard to keep them focused. The governor has declared November Parent Engagement Month. 
So Albany educators are helping guide parents to get more involved with their children's achievements. Officials say some students lack family support, which leads them to become more involved with gangs and illegal activity. Some organizations, like the PTA, are taking a stand to help young students in their schools. As the school continues to reach out to the parents, it is stressing that teachers need to be involved as well. Atlanta filmmakers John and Brantley Watts paid BSU a visit yesterday to bring their film to the brick screen one last time. News by Austin jo Joseph Smith has more. Flyers, emails, word of mouth, and even Facebook posts all heralded the screening of the award-winning film, AKA Blondie. The film tells the tale of 55-year-old stripper Anita Strange, AKA Blondie, who has become a cultural icon as the queen bee of Atlanta's Claremont Lounge, showing off not only her exploits as a stripper, but also as a poet and a gay rights activist. Directors John and Brantley Watts gave me some insight into the process of getting to know both sides of Blondie. Uh, I think for, you know, for us, it was just a matter of, you know, she was someone that, you know, I happened to come across and I knew that there was something a little bit more to tell. You know, uh, Blondie protects Anita. Anita is this really sweet person who wants to love and just really wants to be loved. I think at the end of the day, this is a film about it's a film about love. The Bailey Science Hall saw quite the turnout last night to view the last public screening before the film goes to video on demand. And while the film has brought them great success so far, the Wattses have agreed it's time to move on to other projects. We have created a documentary series that will be profiling local characters um, that kind of highlight Atlanta. And this will be a collaborative effort among other filmmakers as well as artists, musicians, and the Atlanta Film Festival is partnering with us on it. I think the end goal is just to let people see it. And I, I've gotten a lot of, um, you know, just kind of emails about, can I buy the film, can I do all this? So I, I definitely think it's ready. Overall, the final screening was a smash success, and both John and Brantley look forward to seeing what the Internet holds for the tale of Blondie Strange. With your News Valdosta, I'm Joseph Smith. One Albany teen has collected blankets to help provide warmth to those in need. 17-year-old Amelia Middlebrooks recently donated 50 blankets to the Salvation Army. Middlebrooks and her friends started the project called Blanket Albany at their church and collected hundreds of blankets from around the community and their school. They have been collecting blankets for two months and are still receiving donations. For more information about donating, you can call St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Albany. Do you need a place to stay tonight? The Albany Rescue Mission has provided housing and food for the homeless for 25 years. Staying warm on a night like this may not be a big deal for you, but for some folks who don't have a proper home, this might be the best way for them to survive the cold temperatures. The mission says it's simply doing God's will. Better health care opportunities are arriving in Valdosta as South Georgia Medical Center continues to expand. Now the hospital has completed its new heart tower. News Valdosta reporter Zach Saxon has more. South Georgia Medical Center in Valdosta, Georgia has a new addition in the newly constructed Heart Center Tower. Everyone wants themselves or a loved one to receive the best care possible in a time of need. And now South Georgia Medical Center is continuing to innovate to offer the community the best care possible in the region, giving no reason to go elsewhere for health care. Director of Community Relations for SGMC, Laura Love, gives us further details. The Dasher Heart Center at South Georgia Medical Center relocated to our new patient tower around September 3rd of this year. It has been a really great thing for residents in the community and for the hospital staff and physicians as well. The new tower is really a fabulous facility and if you haven't had the opportunity to come to one of our open houses, we would like to take the opportunity to give you a little tour and show you through. Uh, the tower has five floors. The first three floors are dedicated to cardiology services. The fourth floor is a general medical surgical intensive care unit. And then on the fifth floor, we have our neurosurgical uh, floor. So uh, we offer a lot of specialty expertise that really you can't find in any other hospital for about a 45 to 60 mile radius. South Georgia Medical Center is welcoming the new addition of the Dash Memorial Heart Center. The five-story tower contains 90-plus private patient rooms and 24 cardiac intensive care rooms. This will bring South Georgia Medical Center to continue to press to be the leading hospital provider in the region. For News Valdosta, I'm Zach Saxon. Up next on News Valdosta, this chilly weather might be the reason some students are getting sick. 
and the city of Valdosta is moving toward a greener environment. Stay with us. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities, to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Welcome back to News about Austin. Last night was one of the coldest nights we've had this fall, just below freezing. So let's turn to weather anchor Fallon Samaj and see if it's going to warm up soon. Fallon? Thanks, Courtney. Well, it's looking like we'll be receiving a break from the cold temperatures of yesterday. Today's temperature is expected to reach a warm 67 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. A great day to enjoy outdoor activities before the weather gets cold for good. As for tonight, weather... It's predicted to be mostly cloudy with a low of 50 degrees. There is also a 20% chance of rain. Moving on to tomorrow, we're looking forward to more sun with a predicted high of 71 degrees, followed by possible rain showers throughout the evening. The UV index is represented by the level 5, which is moderate for the city of Valdosta. Although it's moderate, please be sure to still apply sunscreen to expose areas and limit time spent out in direct sunlight. The pollen count is low today with ragweed as a predominant pollen. Ragweed is the biggest allergy trigger in the fall. About three quarters of people who are allergic to the spring plants are also allergic to ragweed. Found in tropical and subtropical regions of North America, ragweed are annual and perennial herbs and shrubs. A single ragweed plant can produce a billion grains of pollen, which is transported through the wind. Even if it doesn't grow where you live, it can still travel for hundreds of miles for, throughout the wind. <laughs> for some people who are allergic to ragweed, foods like bananas, melon, and zucchini can also cause symptoms. Common symptoms include runny nose, watery eyes, sneezing, itchy eyes and nose, and dark circles under the eyes. To find out if you're allergic to ragweed, you can visit your local doctor and ask for a skin test or give a blood sample. Also, to treat your ragweed allergies, consult your doctor about prescription nasal spray, antihistamines, decongestants, antihistamine eye drops, and allergy, allergy shots. Well, that's all I have for today's weather forecast. I'm your weather woman, Fallon Samaj. Now let's go back to the news desk with Courtney and Lanika. Thanks, Fallon. Coming up next in sports, the Valwood Valiants aren't the only ones who've made it to the, into the playoffs. Find out who else will go when we get back. Stay with us. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14 one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Welcome back. Football playoffs continue for local teams tomorrow night. Our sports anchor Shelby has more. Shelby? Thanks, Lanika. After defeating the Knights of Community Christian 46-7 last Friday night, the Valwood Valiants will take on the Gators of Gatewood High School in their second round of state playoffs. With a current record of 24 wins, the undefeated Valiants are one step closer to becoming back-to-back -back state champions 
for the GISA Class 3A. The Valiants are not the only ones who've made it into the playoffs. The Valdosta Wildcats hope to redeem themselves from last week's fourth region loss against the Coffee County Trojans as they travel to Fairborn to take on Langston Hughes Panthers in their first round of playoffs. Kickoff for tomorrow night's game is set for 7.30 p.m. The Brooks County Trojans will also play their first playoff game tomorrow night against the Screven County Gamecocks. The Trojans currently have a record with nine wins and one loss. After last week's win against Berrien County, the Trojans have become a favorite heading into the Region 1 2A Division playoffs. For all you basketball fans out there, the season begins this weekend for one of our local teams. The Valdosta Wildcats will host a scrimmage game against the Brooks County Trojans Saturday at 6 p.m. The Wildcats have been hard at work and look forward to their first match of the season. The Lowndes Vikings will host their first basketball game on Monday as they take on Thomas County Central. The game is set to begin at 7.30. Well, that's all I have for our sports today. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Shelby. When we come back, we'll tell you how one local music group is making a difference to the community. And one creepy musical is coming to Valdosta tonight. Stay with us. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Welcome back to our Thursday edition of News About Asta. It's about that time again to help students get some special gifts for Christmas. Georgia law enforcement officers are teaming up with the American Legion and Marine Corps to help less fortunate children have a special Christmas. The Toys for Tots drive will begin November 23rd at 9 a.m. They are encouraging everyone to donate to Toys for Tots. For more information about the drive, call the American Legion Post of Albany. They're creepy, they're spooky, and they're coming to town. The Adams family will be in Valdosta tonight to creep up the town and show you a good time. News Valdosta reporter Alan Morgan has more. I'm here at the Annette Howe Turner Center of the Arts in Valdosta, Georgia. This is a hidden gem in Valdosta, and this Thursday they will be sponsoring an event at Mathis Theater showcasing the Adams family, which is fresh off of Broadway. This will be a fun experience for the whole family to enjoy. We spoke to Miss Oliver to give us a little more information about the Adams Family Experience. We came to the Annette Howe Turner Center of the Arts, which houses six galleries, multiple constant and non-constant exhibits, and classes to speak with Miss Executive Director, Miss Oliver, about something that's pretty spooky and altogether ooky. That's right the Adams Family, and it's coming to Mathis Auditorium this Thursday. We went to talk to her for a little bit more information. The Adams Family is going to be quite an experience. It might be a little bit spooky. It's going to be very musical. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, here's a chance to see right here in Valdosta, Georgia, um, a Broadway musical that's now on national tour performed by professionals. It just came off of Broadway, won many awards while it ran on Broadway, and we're going to get to see it right here in Valdosta. We're kind of pinching ourselves that we were able to get a show this size, this soon, off after its Broadway run, to come to Valdosta. If you're interested in seeing the crazy Adams Family live, it's only here. For one night only. It starts at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, November 14th at Mathis City Auditorium, right here in Valdosta. So come on out this Thursday to Mathis Auditorium to experience the Adams Family. 
They'll turn the lights off for you. This is Alan Morgan, News Valdosta. Valdosta natives are bringing worldwide attention to the city, and they are doing this with a little thing called music. Reporter Robin Carter shows us how. Music World Order, better known as MWO, is a music group and company that was founded by Denicio Grant, Calvin Rogers, Craig Wooten, and manager Everett Chapman. The group was founded in Valdosta in 2011, and since then they have performed in New York, Virginia, and Florida. And they've even made their way to Europe. I got a chance to recently sit down with the music group to see how being in Valdosta has given them inspiration. I've got the privilege to just run into other people uh, that's been around music just as long as I have. And it's about, you know, us sharing each other's dreams. And uh, that's what Music World Order is about. Music World Order is about showing people that dreams do come true. When inspiration is involved between friends, dreams do come true. MWO says one of their biggest accomplishments to date has been the front page feature of member Craig Wu Wooten. They say it's the beginning of their quest to bring worldwide attention to the city of Varosta. Everything that we do out of state, which we've done out of state stuff already, is to out of the country. It's to out of, out of the country. Um, it's basically just to build a brand outside of uh, Varosta and bring it back, of course, to the home team. And they have no plans of stopping now. Music World Order plans to move to Virginia next year, where they will continue to hone their talents and also perform in bigger venues. If you want to see a performance right away, you're in luck. Tonight at 6 p.m., Craig Wooten will be in the VSU Cypher on VSU's campus. Also, if you want to know any more performance dates, you can also get in touch with them at facebook.com backslash musicworldorder. Well, that's our show today. I'm Monique Alexander. And I'm Courtney Chickas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.